so today's video is going to be a best and worst of video. This is actually a series I started on my channel a few years ago and I never really stuck to it. I've done a few brands, Catrice, I think I did Tarte, I can't remember off the top of my head. I have terrible memory. But basically, I would dedicate a video to one brand and I would tell you my top, like, top five absolute favorite things from the brand and then I would tell you like my bottom five not so great least favorite things from the brand and this is actually a type of video I would like to bring back to my channel pick up the series again if it's something you want to watch like if you enjoy today's video definitely let me know and then let me know what brand you want to see next but for today's video we are going to be talking all about Pat McGrath. Now it's crazy because what inspired me to do this video again was actually a Pat McGrath product that I didn't like at all and it bothered me how much I didn't like it. <laughs> so I feel like I really want to talk about it since this brand is on the pricier side and I'm not gonna lie I was actually on the fence about filming this video. I was I was going back and forth in my mind because I love Pat McGrath. Not just the brand, I really admire Pat herself. I think she's a super smart, amazing makeup artist, super talented. I really, really love her vision and she's so, she's really, really incredible. So naturally, I was nervous to film this video because I don't, I hate making brands and people feel bad. But at the end of the day, I always have to remember that my honesty and my authenticity is the most important thing to me. So if that means doing a review on a product that I don't necessarily love, even though that might make the brand feel bad, it's still really important to me that I review products for you guys and I'm giving you my honest opinion no matter what because at the end of the day we all have opinions and we all have our preferences and we're not gonna like everything a brand does and that's okay but what's not okay is only praising brands and only talking about the things that we love and not really talking about the things that didn't work for us because even though everybody's different and the things that I'm gonna talk about in this video that I don't like you might love them, but I still think it's important that I give you my opinion on the things that just didn't work for me. Because I mean, that's what having a beauty channel is all about. It's about reviewing products, every brand under the sun, talking about the good, the bad. So, I'm sorry this was the longest intro ever. But that being said, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my top, 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 must have, cannot live without, you need them in your life, Pat McGrath products. And I'm also gonna be telling you about the products that I think you can 100% skip in my opinion, these are the products that I don't think are worth the money, that are personally nothing special, and yeah, I want to share it all with you guys. And I hope that you find this video helpful in some way. Maybe you're looking into getting some Pat McGrath stuff and you just want a review on some of the products, so let's begin. Okay, so I'm actually going to start off on a sour note. We're going to start off on a bad foot because I really want to end this video on a happy note. I'm going to give you my bottom five products first. Now, for my first product, and I want to say this is probably my most disliked product from Pat McGrath. This is the product that actually inspired this entire video, and I'm going to tell you why. So when it comes to Pat McGrath, I really do hold her packaging to a super high stand. Like, I hold this brand to a very, very, very high standard just because that price tag is really Really steep. I want to say Pat McGrath is one of the most expensive brands at Sephora. It's like on the same scale price wise, I think, as like YSL makeup, Tom Ford makeup. Maybe not as extreme as those, but it's definitely more expensive than your typical high end makeup like Tarte, Too Faced, Benefit, things like that. This is at a higher scale for sure. So because of that price tag, I expect you to not only give me an amazing formula, like an amazing product inside, but the packaging has to be incredible as well because I'm paying for both. Like sure, her stuff is expensive, but it also looks expensive. It also feels super expensive. And I'm getting heated in this part, but I feel strongly about this packaging. This is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Primer, and in my opinion, it is incredibly overpriced. This is supposed to be like your perfect all-around primer. It's supposed to smooth, hydrate, fill in the pores. It's supposed to do it all. It also has hyaluronic acid, which is awesome. It's a $60 primer, which is very, very expensive, and in my opinion, this packaging is, is not the wave. This packaging is not it. I know it sounds mean, and I, I'm sorry, but this just feels so incredibly cheap to me and look at this okay this is a 60 dollars primer that i've barely touched and this paper is coming off like i've had to sit there and like try to stick it back but with time it just starts to peel up again and i'm sorry but i just feel like that's a little bit unacceptable for a primer with this price tag it's just that you look at her other stuff the foundation these lipsticks everything about pat screams luxury packaging and this absolutely does not. This is just like a little plastic bottle and they put a little paper on it and that's it. This is just like a little traditional plastic pump and don't get me wrong, I'm not mad at it, but it's Pat McGrath. So, so I guess I, I am 
a little bit bad at it. <laughs> so besides the packaging, I also don't feel like this primer does anything extraordinary or out of this world for me. It honestly feels, and please don't take this the wrong way, but it feels like I'm putting on a drugstore primer. I don't think this is worth it. I don't think this hits Pat McGrath's standards. I just don't. I'm not a fan. Should I do like a bad, a good, a bad, a good? So it's not just like bad, 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 bad. I think I want to do that. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, let's talk about something that is 1000% worth it. Let's go to my number one. You need this product in your life. Can you guess what it is? Take a wild guess. I'm going to give you a clue. What does it sound like to you? If you guess lip liners, you're correct. I feel so strongly about these lip liners that every single lip liner in my collection can go away. And as long as I have my Pat McGrath lip liners, I'll be okay. I'll be hurting a little bit. I'll be hurting. But I'll be okay. Because the Pat McGrath Perma Gel Ultra Lip Pencils are the best lip pencils I've ever used in the history of ever. Now, with that being said, that's expensive. For a lip liner? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when I tell you that these lip liners were made of pure magic, tell me how she got these so slippy, so like smooth and buttery. They just glide on effortlessly, yet they last an insane amount of time. These lip liners will stay on my lips all day long and they don't smudge they don't get weird they are so exceptional my favorite pat product ever especially the shade contour this is the lip liner i'm wearing today i use this to overdraw my lips this is the perfect overdrawing lip liner look how little my guy is he's a little tiny boy i actually have another contour here yeah, look, this one I keep in my purse and this one I keep here. My second favorite though, if you think contour is a little bit too deep and brown, you would really love Done Undone. I wanna say, I, well, no, I love contour a little more. But Done Undone is the perfect everyday pinky nude and it goes with so many things. But yeah, if I could just recommend one product from this video, it would be these freaking lip liners. All right. Let's go back to this side of town. So the Pat McGrath brushes are really nice, really soft, but in my opinion, not worth the money. When I got this brush in the mail, I was a little bit disappointed. When I look at it, it's absolutely beautiful. Like this is an ideal brush. It's sleek black with the gold, really beautiful. The bristles are really soft, but it just feels kind of not flimsy, but there's just no weight to this brush. It feels very lightweight. I don't know. I was kind of expecting something a little bit more weighted since this is almost a $60 brush. I think it's like 58. So it definitely is on the pricey side. And in my opinion, I feel like you can find this exact brush, obviously with like a different packaging, but you can find this exact bronzer brush for like half the price. I don't think it does anything exceptional for you to be like, worth it, $58, yes. It's just a bronzer brush. And yeah, okay, this is just a lip liner, but this does things to me. This does nothing to me. I'm sorry, Pat. I hope she doesn't watch this video. I'm sorry. I just personally think for the price, this brush could have been a little bit more weighted, a little bit higher quality. I've used this with bronzer and powder a few times and I like it, it gets the job done. But what I'm saying is I personally wouldn't go out and buy it again because I was a little bit let down, you know? And you know what? Her other brushes might be better. The other ones are a bit more affordable, so they might be more worth it. Personally, if you want my super, super honest opinion, you can get the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Wand brush. It's like the big puffy one. I have it here somewhere. It's a little bit shorter than this, but the shape of the bristles look very, very similar to this. And it is the most incredible, softest bronzer brush ever. Super high quality. It feels very luxe. And that brush is $48, which still expensive, but feels worth it. You know, this one, it's a whole ass $10 more and doesn't feel as luxe to me. Okay. Let's talk about another Pat McGrath product that I am obsessed with in love with and highly recommend. You need it. This was actually a very slow love affair. I wasn't madly in love the first time I used it, but the more that I used it, it became like an addiction. And now I need this mascara in my collection at all times. It honestly is fighting for first place. My favorite mascara of all time is the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara. Incredible. This one, oh, it's right there. The only reason this one doesn't take the lead over the Lancome one is because the scent on this is so strong that it drives me crazy. But to be honest, it doesn't drive me that crazy because the the formula is that good that I look past the scent and I wear it anyway. This is the Fetish Eyes Mascara and holy moly is good. Sure, the packaging is like basic. It's just a black tube. It's like a standard sample packaging pretty much. But the formula though. See, this is the case where I'm like, Pat McGrath, you, 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 I don't care about this packaging. The inside is so good that it's worth it. It makes my lashes so incredibly thick black, voluminous, long. It's the full package. You know how whenever you wear wing liner, I'm wearing some wings today. I'm trying to improve on my 
wing skill. But you know how when you put on mascara when you have a thick wing, you can't really tell how your mascara looks. Usually you'd want to put on falsies when you have a wing liner because your lashes kind of camouflage in front of the eyeliner so you don't really see them that much. This mascara makes your eyes pop even with freaking eyeliner on. Whenever I want my lashes to look incredible, I will reach for this. This is such a great mascara. I wish it didn't smell like this because the scent does linger on my eyes for a while. I smell it. Like when I'm done doing my makeup, I will smell my mascara for at least 15 minutes. Not my favorite, but who cares? This is so good. So good, who cares? Now, I will say, which is a good thing, I have more loves than I do not loves. So once I'm done with my not love pile, we will continue. On this side. So my next disappointing product isn't necessarily like bad. Um, I don't think it's a bad product at all actually. I just don't think it's worth the price. And honestly that's what this boils down to. To me when it comes to Pat McGrath it's like is it worth the price? Can I get that same product at a more affordable price? You know what I mean? So this is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Setting Powder and I have mine in the shade Light One. This is a really nice powder, don't get me wrong. I feel like it sets my skin well. It's not too powdery. It doesn't make my skin look super dry, super matte, like a lot of powders that I hate. This is not a powder I hate. I like it, it's nice, but it's $55. And I feel like it's not worth the money. Like my Thrive Cosmetics powder, for example, it's my Holy Grail loose setting powder. It blurs the skin like no other. I am truly obsessed with it. My Glossier Wowder is really nice. My freaking Maybelline Fit Me powder is really, really nice. Just as nice as this. I don't think I put this powder on and immediately think like, what? Wow, ooh, this knocks my socks off, wow. So for that reason, I really can't sit here and recommend this powder with my full chest because I don't think it's anything that's out of this world. It's nice, but it's not amazing. A powder of hers that I do think is worth it is this. And I've actually only been using this for like three days. <laughs> But I love it. I love it so much. And I knew I was gonna love it because I had the light shade. This comes in three different, let me tell you what it is. This is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. And it comes in three different shades, light, medium, and deep, I believe. This one is in the shade medium, and the light one is literally white. It's not like a light cream color, it's white, which is perfect for really brightening up your under eye. If you have really fair skin, that's gonna look so beautiful and like ethereal and a very soft way gorgeous. This one in the shade medium is actually what I've been using to kind of set my entire face, which is probably not ideal. I'll probably hit pan on this a lot sooner than I would like to, but it just makes the skin look so nice. I really do see a difference when I set my face with this versus like a regular setting powder. It really is such a creamy formula, like so buttery smooth and it has a very very slight extremely minimal sheen to it it looks matte in the compact but once you start buffing it onto the skin you see that it has like this slight reflecting element to it but it's so subtle i don't know how to explain it but once you start buffing it onto your face oh my god it just makes your face look so healthy and matte but in a good way and it looks like your skin is naturally plump and beautiful i don't know how to explain it but it sets your makeup so nicely, especially if you have dry skin. I feel like you would really, really like this. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and group these two in one category because they're both eyeliners, even though one is a liquid and one is a pencil. I am not crazy about these guys. I was actually pretty let down by this. This one specifically. This is the Permagel Ultra Glide Eye Pencil. Every time I use this eyeliner, it fades in my waterline so quickly. Like I'll put it on and it'll be black and super intense for like an hour and <laughs> look at my face like two hours later and I don't see any eyeliner in my waterline. It's so frustrating, I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's just my eyes but this eyeliner does not work for me. My ColourPop eyeliners last on my waterline longer than this and those are like what, $7 eyeliners? This is like quadruple that price. I don't think it's worth the money at all personally and I had to like break my cap I don't know if you can see that because the cap wasn't coming off like every time I would close it the cap would stay stuck on and I had to like pry it open one time so that wasn't fun but besides that the formula just is not my favorite I much prefer my Marc Jacobs eyeliners those are actually the best eyeliners I've ever used and they're two dollars cheaper than this one and I also don't think their liquid liner is worth it this is the perma precision precision liquid liner in the shade extreme black and don't get me wrong it's black. In fact, it's super black and super matte. You know what? I don't dislike this product at all. I think it is a good eyeliner. I just don't think it's worth $32. The best, 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 best liquid liner I've ever used is the Balm Schwing. 
and that's half of the price of this. So I feel like you can get this exact look. You can get a really amazing wing with several other liquid liners. I don't think you need this one. Another one that I really, really, really love is the Anastasia one, the one that comes in the purple packaging. That one's super matte and black and it's $18. I just don't think you need to be paying over $30 for a liquid liner, you know? Unless it was like, oh my God, then no. All right, guys, so those are pretty much all the products I dislike from Pat McGrath. Those are all the ones that I think are absolutely not worth it. I still have some top dogs to talk about because I've only discussed three so far and there is more. So let's keep going. I truly believe Pat McGrath knows her shit when it comes to eyeshadows and lip products. I feel like I have yet to be disappointed by a Pat McGrath lip product. I love the Pat McGrath lipsticks, yes. They're very, very expensive. And sure, you can find something similar in another brand, but I do think overall the Pat McGrath lipsticks are worth it. I love the formula of the lipsticks, especially, especially these Blitz Trance lipsticks. They're the ones that have like the sheen to them. And I just think they're so beautiful on the lips. They have that beautiful glitter to them, but they don't feel crusty on the mouth. They feel so nice. They look so beautiful. I love the shimmer in it. It doesn't look cheap at all. I think they're really, really great. And then her other lip product I'm obsessed with. I even like these more than the lipsticks. I think her lip glosses are incredible. So juicy, so glossy, so shiny. But yet super comfortable, not sticky, not like, ugh, get this hair out of my lip gloss. So good. Everything about them is good. They have the perfect amount of pigmentation. They've got it all, guys. They've got it all. Pat McGrath just does shimmers really well. Like everything in her line that has a sheen or a shimmeriness to it, is so finely milled and so, like the formula is so perfect. So as you might already guess, the shimmery lip glosses are my freaking favorite. These are called the Opal Lust lip glosses, the ones that are shimmery like this. Oh my gosh, they look so nice on the lips and they're not like a thick glitter, like when you rub your lips together. Like I have a little bit of this one on right now. This is the shade Bronze Divinity. I am obsessed with this one. One of my top favorite glosses. This looks so beautiful on nude, like on a nude lipstick. You barely touch your lips with these glosses and they're just so shiny and they give off such a beautiful sheen and they're not like thick and chunky when you put your lips together. Some shimmery lip glosses, you're like, that's about to cut my lips. That's how sharp these glitters are. That's not the case with these. They're such a beautiful formula. I also feel the same way about their creams. They have a really nice shade selection. You can get really beautiful nudes and the pigmentation is just right. It's not too much, but not too little. It's great. Oh, I also really enjoy their packaging, by the way. Yes, these are very, very pricey, but they feel heavy and they are just so beautiful. Okay, let's talk about the most expensive thing that she sells. The Pat McGrath Mothership palettes create quite the buzz around town because I think her palettes are so good, so unique. I don't mean all of them though. I don't mean all of them. I actually have two here that I don't think are worth the money and I'll go into why in a second. Like I'll show you those in a second, but these, these three specifically, these are incredible. These are bomb. This one specifically though, this is my number one, this puppy. So you guys already know the price of these palettes. I don't want to make your ears bleed by saying it out loud and saying it again, but you know, you know the price. It's tough. It's very, very, very tough. And it's a decision that takes a lot of thought. I know it is, but I will say the packaging on this is so heavy and so luxe that when you get it in the mail, you're not like, I paid all of that for this shit. You will never, ever, ever feel that way in terms of packaging alone. Like the packaging truly, truly, truly feels so damn expensive. There's so much weight to this. I love the packaging. You get a mirror. It's great. Now, I also think her eyeshadows are incredible. Specifically, these amazing shimmery magical ones. I mean, this quad right here is incredible. It's like formulas I've never experienced before personally. I feel like there aren't many brands that give me this. Like unless it's a loose shimmery pigment, like a glittery pigment, like the Artist Couture ones, the Hourglass ones, you do get these finishes like that in like single pots, but never in a palette like this. So because of that, I do think that these palettes offer something that no other palette does. I really can't look at this and be like, you know what, you can get that with X, Y, and Z. I don't personally feel that way. So because of that, I think that some of these are 100% worth it. And even though they are an investment, because they are, 
They're an investment. They aren't a disappointing investment, in my opinion. I also really love this one. You get three of those, well, you get four of those like metallic sparkly shimmery shades in this one. And then I also really like this one. I like the color selection and I feel like you can get really cool looks with this. Now, with that being said, I don't necessarily think these two are worth it. I don't really use these. This one is cool. You do get that really intense shimmery formula. Like this one has that unique element. But these colors are so basic, these mattes, that I'm like, mm, no, I don't think that whole palette is worth it just for four shadows. And then I kind of feel the same way about this. The color story is really nice, but none of these eyeshadows are that intense formula. None of these have that like foiled glitter, out of this world, never seen before formula that all of these other ones have. So I'm like, Mm, no, then you are not worth it to me. But for the most part, I really, really like these. And if you're thinking, oh, you know what? That's way too much money. I would never spend that much money on an eyeshadow palette. Check out the quads. She has a couple quads that are still very pricey. Still very pricey, but a lot more affordable, of course. And I personally really, really love this one. So nice. And it's like a perfect everyday neutral palette. Okay, we are almost done. We have one more product to talk about that I do think is worth it and I really, really love. And that's the Sublime Skin Highlighter Palette. Now, I'm not gonna lie, when I first got this, I was kind of a hater of this palette. Just because I was kind of a hater of the classic traditional gold Pat McGrath highlight that everybody loves and raves about and it was super popular like a couple years ago here on YouTube Everyone was wearing this highlight. She does sell it in a single But I personally think that this palette is a little bit more worth it Yes, it's more expensive But you do get two more shades and it's more affordable than if you bought like three individual highlighters And even if this color is like too deep for you, which is my case For example, I will just use this as an eyeshadow and then I'll use these two as a highlight And the reason I think this palette is worth it is because I cannot find another highlight that's quite like this, especially this gold one. And yes, don't get me wrong, like we've seen this a million times, but these highlights are almost invisible until you hit the light. The formula is so well done. I'm actually wearing the gold one on my skin right now. And I used to not like this highlight that much because I'm not a huge fan of like super gold highlights, but this one is so invisible that it doesn't really look like a stripe on my skin. And I feel like it's the kind of highlight that anyone can wear. Whether you're super, super fair or have a very, very, very deep skin tone, I think this is gonna be universal and beautiful on everyone, which is so rare for a gold highlight. So I do think that that's super unique and these formulas just melt into the skin and they don't even look like they're sitting on your skin. It looks like it's one with the skin. It really is a very, very great formula. But okay, oh my gosh, we're done. That completes this video, guys. This was my best and worst of Pat McGrath. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you found it informative somehow, entertaining, maybe. Let me know if you like this kind of video and I will do it some more with other brands and also comment the brand you would like me to do next. But yeah, guys, that completes this video. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye Look at him. Look. You see he knows guys. He knows. Porter knows my outro. What's up? I'm done Let's go outside. You want to go outside? You want to go outside? Yeah. Bye guys